My job is to somehow make them curious enough or persuade them by hook or crook to get more aware of themselves and where they came from and what they are into and what is already there and just to bring it out. This is what compels me to compel them. Since the beginning of time, people have been taking a stand for what they believe is right. Whether that be a small child standing up to a bully, or something as complex as citizens protesting against their country's corrupt government. A person who takes a stand is a lot more courageous than what they may appear to be at the time. They are someone with a strong mind and a determined heart who will not be knocked down easily. Likewise, this person who takes a stand can choose to do it through numerous means, whether it be their words, like Martin Luther King, or their actions, like Mahatma Gandhi. Yet, there are a few who have been able to successfully take a stand without using their dialogue or actions, but with art. Numerous people have taken a stand throughout history and continue to take a stand today, but few have successfully taken a stand through a means as creative as Nina Simone's. Nina Simone not only used her music to express her political views and opinion about the civil rights movement, but sacrificed her career for the sake of taking a stand. And I'm feeling good. Nina Simone was born Eunice Kathleen Wayman on February 21, 1933 in Tryon, North Carolina. She was the sixth child of a preacher and grew up with music integrated into her daily life. At age three, Eunice began to learn to play the piano, and when she was six, she became the pianist for her mother's church. Soon after, Eunice's mom began to work as a maid for a woman named Muriel Masinovich. One day Muriel heard Eunice playing and recognized her talent. So, she began to pay for Eunice to receive piano lessons. As a result, Eunice developed the dream of becoming the first black concert pianist. When she turned 18, her community raised money to send her to Juilliard, along with the one-year scholarship she had already earned to attend. While at Juilliard, Eunice planned to prepare for her audition for the Curtis Institute of Music, which would be a major stepping stone in her career, let alone any musician's career. Despite this, Eunice was denied acceptance to the Institute. She believed the reason was because of her race. Although this belief was small, it foreshadowed her future role in the movement of a lifetime. Even though her dreams had been crushed when she was denied to the Curtis Institute, Eunice decided to continue with her passion for music by teaching students in the city. After seeing that one of her students was earning more money than her, Eunice began to play piano in bars for a better wage. But there was one issue. Her mother was a strong Christian believer and jazz was considered the devil's music and not to be played. So Eunice created the stage name Nina Simone to hide from her family. She got the name Nina from her Spanish-speaking ex-boyfriend who would call her Nina, and she got the name Simone from a French actress named Simone Signoret. Nina Simone's playing combined widely known songs with classical music to create her own type of music. It created a new feel to music which attracted young people in the bar. Because of this, she became widely known. It was also during this time that Simone often performed at jazz clubs, but did not like to be called a jazz singer. She believed jazz to whites meant black, and black was dirt, and that was not what she played. Beliefs like this left Simone feeling oppressed, but it was the civil rights movement that allowed her to speak up. One of Simone's first songs expressing her social opinion was Blackbird. She wrote the song to express her feelings on the racial crisis at the time, although she had yet to speak publicly about her beliefs. It was not until Easter weekend in 1963 that Simone was forced to realize how truly involved she would have to become in the civil rights movement. The days following Dr. King's imprisonment, numerous black commentators began to voice their angry opinions on black entertainers and how they were doing nothing to help their people and were simply basking in their own wealth. Nina realized she would have to be more involved, so she turned to one of her good friends for help, Lorraine Hansberry, a civil rights activist and world-renowned playwright. When Simone first went to Hansberry to be enlightened on the civil rights situation, Hansberry could see Simone's reluctance to be involved in the movement because she would be putting her career and life on the line. So, Hansberry immediately told Simone that because she was black, she was already involved in the movement, whether she liked it or not. June of 1963, Simone was ready to take a stand. It was after watching President Kennedy's speech on the civil rights situation that Simone began to feel optimistic about a peaceful movement, but this feeling did not last long. 
Soon thereafter, three events occurred that lit Simone's flame for activism. After the assassination of NAACP Mississippi Field Secretary Medgar Evers on his own front porch, Nina Simone completely changed her optimistic view on the movement. The first sign her change was seen when she met with Hansberry and the Student Nonviolent Committee, who sponsored Martin Luther King's jail march. At this meeting, Simone agreed to perform at the Carnegie Hall to raise money for the march. And while doing so, she forced her audience to realize how important their voice was to the cause. The other two events that significantly impacted Simone's view on the civil rights movement were the 16th Street Baptist Church bombing and the killing of a young African-American girl in a drive-by shooting. It was during this time of chaotic events that Simone says she realized what it meant to be black in America, and this intellectual awakening came in a rush of fury and determination. If I had my way, I'd have been a killer. And I would have gone to the South and gave them violence for violence, shotgun for shotgun. But her husband, who was also her manager at the time, reminded her that all she had was her music. As a result, Simone wrote one of her most famous singles, Mississippi Goddamn. You don't have to live next to me. Just give me my equality. She later released her song, Backlash Blues, which was declared the Black National Anthem by the Congress of Racial Equality. Other songs such as Old Jim Crow also portrayed protests with lyrics such as It ain't your name, it's the things you do. While her song To Be Young, Gifted, and Black was an autobiographical message to young African American people across the nation. Simone felt it her duty to pass on everything Hansberry had taught her about the civil rights movement. It was in songs such as these that Simone used not only her words to convey her political opinion, but also voiced her anger through her performance. Politically, Nina Simone was the person who strongly advocated a violent approach to the civil rights movement. In one of her first meetings with Dr. King, she told him, I am not nonviolent. This rage was not only a reflection of her anger from the maltreatment of her race, but also of the abuse of her husband, a police officer. Simone's former band leader, Al Shackman, spoke of Simone saying, Her songs were threatening, which is why record labels were afraid to pick her up and sponsor her and her political views at the time forced her out of the country. A majority, if not all, of Nina Simone's songs had a political undertone to them, which was especially an issue when it came to Simone's performances in southern states such as Alabama. During the time of the Selma marches, Simone was scheduled to perform in Alabama, but the governor put garbage trucks on the airport runway to prevent her plane from landing. So, Simone and her band ended up landing in Montgomery and being escorted by the National Guard. When they arrived, the enraged African Americans were so eager to hear Simone's words of wisdom that they built the stage out of coffins provided by black cemeteries. This shows how Nina Simone used her determination to rally her people to fight for equality, and it was times such as these that began to define not only Nina Simone's career, but also her life. And for even the strongest, this can be too much to bear. In September of 1970, Nina Simone fled to Barbados due to tax evasion, corrupt people at her record label, the lack of respect from her audiences, and the death of numerous civil rights activists. She moved to Liberia because she believed it was a country formed by her people and where she should be. Then she moved to Switzerland for her daughter's education, where she began to perform at jazz festivals to earn an income. While at one jazz festival, a man told her he would sponsor her, but instead beat her and robbed her. When she saw that authorities did nothing afterwards, she attempted suicide, but awoke in a London hospital. After recovery, Simone began to ease her way back into showbiz with small gigs, and in 1985, she returned to America. After returning, she had trouble with the law in fines and probation, but towards the end of her life, she was genuinely happy. She spent her last eight years in her home in France, and Nina Simone died April 23, 2003, at the age of 70, of natural causes. Although numerous people have taken a stand in history, Nina Simone was one of the few who was able to voice her opinion in a creative way that grabbed the audience's attention while making them feel the rage and pain that she felt at the same time. Despite living a grueling life with numerous ups and downs, Nina Simone stood for what she believed in. Simone brought to the attention of the public the lack of education of youth on the civil rights movement with her performances and her lyrics. While her lyrics gave a feeling of hope to the movement despite the violence, Nina Simone also stood for the injustice that blacks faced. Most of all, Nina Simone showed that We will shape and mold this country or it will not be molded and shaped at all anymore. So I Just in time You found me just in time